And I think that's why art needs to exist. And I think that's why artists should be allowed to truly express themselves in their art, even if it gets not like controversial, but you know, it can get a little like gritty. Yeah. Hey guys, in this episode, I'm joined by Jacqueline Jisoo Cho. She's a Korean artist and illustrator known for her pop art character illustrations. In this video, we talk about what it means to be an artist and the importance of finding your own voice. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Okay, cool. Uh, I think we're all going. Okay, cool. I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, no, cool. thank you for having me. Um, so I guess for, for context, uh, I met you at New York Comic Con when I interviewed you for a Proco video. Like, yes. Like a year and a half ago or two years ago or something. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's was. it been quite a while. <laughs> well, and I, I guess the point of that video was like talking to you about like, you know, you, you giving advice to students and... Uh, I guess how you got your start and all that kind of stuff. And uh, do, 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 uh, do you have any initial thoughts on that or anything? Or um, so definitely, I my first thought, and I might I think I might have said this in the Proco video, but I feel like I am not personally the best person to ask, yeah. um, just because I have a very unorthodox path. Yeah, and um, I think a lot of times, like in my career, things have just sort of happened, or have happened to just. Yeah. like been around like certain people or things that have led to opportunities. Um, but I do think the greater lesson to take from that is that that's kind of just like life overall. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that like, I didn't go to art school. Um, I didn't start out in like traditional art circles, but like at the end of the day, what we do all have is like the internet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So I was able to take like whatever, like I guess virality or like following that I did get from posting just like my work online in various communities. Yeah. Um, I was able to eventually take that and kind of like turn it into like an art career that resembles like the actual art and like lifestyle that I actually want to live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, so something that I'm learning and something that's kind of common across all podcasts that I've had is like, everyone has had like a pretty non-conventional path. Even the people that went to art school, they had something happen along the way that like, like stood in the way of them becoming the person that they are today, you know, whether mm. it's being like a, like a rock climber or like a, an artist, painter, concept artist, like whatever. And uh, a musician and the thing i'm i guess the thing i'm trying to do with this whatever this thing is is like talk about like you know in spite of all of the roadblocks how does somebody like figure out their own path and it, it's really inspiring to hear that like you don't have to go two hundred thousand dollars into debt in order to have like to like make a living off oh of no it. Yeah. i tell people i actually advise people probably not to go to art school if they can yeah um i think that a lot of way success like if we're looking at what traditionally people see as success, um, like you're a well-known artist, you got gigs, you're yeah. doing fine. Um, Pay rent and stuff. Yeah, you can like afford to live being a full-time artist. I would say that's probably like, like the yeah, or, yeah, yeah, the metric. Um, I think it just takes because it's a creative field. Uh, yeah. You know, you're not gonna go to school to be like a lawyer, or a doctor. You know, that's completely different. Right. In creative fields, I think you do need like that certain level of grit and commitment to just like keep doing and going, yeah. no matter how difficult it gets. And I think that the bigger takeaway from that, though, is that like most artists, the reason why they create is because they love creating. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to do with the fact that they're like, oh, I'm doing this because I need a job or I need yeah. money. It's like, if you wanted money, you would probably yeah, 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 yeah. go into something else. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. so at the end of the day, I think a lot of these artists that do happen to like wait, make it, um, it's literally just because they love art. Uh, like I've always just drawn, I will continue to draw no matter yeah. how tough it gets. Cause that's just like what I like doing. And I think that's really the bigger, like, success for formula or six formula for success is just to be creating and creating for the right reasons and to be consistent with it yeah. and to continue to like stoke that passion. Right. Um, Cause people can definitely feel it. And that's also how you find your own artistic voice. Like I found that the artistic journey is also simultaneously a growth journey of like personal growth. Yeah. Um, so in art, I've discovered a lot about myself and obviously like goes the other way around. Right. And that's kind of like how people develop their own styles or like what they get known for. It's literally like you are discovering who you are as a person. Yeah. Um, and I think those go like hand in hand for sure. Yeah. Well, I, 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 well, I feel like 
the my prop my biggest problem with something like art school is that like it's pretty much impossible i think to follow someone else's formula for what success is and how yeah. it work out you know and I, I guess in my own life whenever i've like deviated a little bit from that path like i've gone i've had moments in my life when i'm listening to people way more and doing my own thing and i feel like i've become more fulfilled and successful from my own perspective and my own uh, definition of what that means by just doing this you know like living in a van uh, or like <laughs> I mean, uh, traveling around and stuff. <laughs> yeah um and uh yeah no I, I think it's like when i was like in art school or trying to like have someone else teach me how to draw like it was theoretically correct but it wasn't like uh the way that i would spend my life doing it it, it, it like if, if i had to do that until the end of my life i probably would yeah. quit right yeah um and yeah and i i guess it's um you know as i'm talking to more and more people it does seem like the more that you're able to lean into your like uh here i'll, I'll wait a second for <laughs> <laughs> no, some background noise yeah yeah it's it's, it's um part of the whole experience is that we're, we're, we're in a park in Pasadena right now no I love <laughs> it it's so on. immersive yeah give me well, the touch grass experience yeah I, I guess part of, like <laughs> I, I I thought about like it, it'd be cheaper and more practical to just do it over zoom because like I don't have to drive there um mm. it's just like th- there's less there's more things I'm in control of like there's a random sound yeah but this is like so much more fun absolutely yeah it's like way more memorable and way cooler i would much yeah. rather do this yeah. than a zoom call yeah, like 100 yeah, percent. like i'm yeah. so glad i came out and drove and like the air feels so good the sun feels so good like it's yeah. just all positives all around yeah yeah absolutely well and i guess it's like um if i was like listening to what like the advice like common sense right which is like do it over zoom or uh, instead, or on a more broad scale, like don't do it at all and become a lawyer, then it, it, I just wouldn't be as happy, you know. Mm. And and this whole thing either wouldn't have happened, I would have lost interest, or it would just be shittier, you know. I think a big thing I've been realizing is like coming back to like what you just said, and also how you just mentioned like when you were in art school, people were teaching you a way that you just couldn't see yourself doing for the rest of your life. Yeah. I think what's more important than anything else is like finding something that works for you and is sustainable and you're passionate and happy about and you can keep doing. And I think that goes applies to anything, whether it's art or like what you just you're like your day to day, what it looks like. Um, And like especially in art, though, I always tell a lot of people who are just starting out there, like, what should I practice? How should I draw? What should I do? And I'm just like, literally just find something you love enough to just like keep drawing it. Yeah. Like you can keep drawing the same anime character if that's like your favorite thing to draw. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of artists. There's like so many really good online artists that are just they just do like fan art, but they're so good at painting. Yeah, and yeah. Like they develop that skill because they just have such a love for that character and series. Right. And I think that's really what it comes down to is you need to find something that you like really makes you tick. Yeah. Um, and I find like stylistically too, and in your career, like you can't, it's, it's like, if you try to parrot what someone else did, like you're not doing something from your heart and right. you're not, everyone's life is different. Everyone is different. Yeah. So what makes someone else tick or works for them isn't necessarily going to work for you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just a process of like self-discovery and like experimentation. Yeah. Um, but I think the word sustainable, like that's been so huge to me uh, lately. And what it comes down to for me, when I say sustainable, I mean like finding a voice and something that you can you can continue yeah. and prolong for the long term. Um, and it doesn't like, you know, tire or like what's the burnout. It doesn't, yeah, yeah. yeah it doesn't cause burnout. There we go. Yeah. Well, I, I, and I feel like, um, you know, th- I, I was talking to a friend about this and I've been mentioning this a lot on every podcast that uh, this guy named Kavi Taharian mentioned. It's like the job isn't necessarily uh, to like learn how to direct or learn how to paint or learn how to sell prints or anything. It's to find the thing that you love because like theoretically, like learning how to draw or any of that stuff, it, it, it's pretty easy. Like learning the skills to direct and yeah. could take like two years or something, but it's like, if you're not prepared to like do that for the next 40 or 60 years or whatever, and it really enjoy it, then it might not be even worth the time. You know? Right. Um, and I, I feel like, um, uh, one of my problems with, uh, like, I guess not problems, but one of the realities of being a person is that 
you have to like balance the uh, practical side of living along with the practical, like just like doing what you love. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and I get the impression like most people don't really care about like working on a big project or anything. They just want to like get by and pay rent and do the things they care about. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a constant struggle for everyone, especially yeah. artists. Uh, I would say for me, um, I, oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> bugs. no, no, no. I, I'm getting a bug net for this thing. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. You're yeah. like totally fitting it out with yeah. all the upgrades. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, like for me, especially, I found that I'm a lot more on the, I need to be doing what I love side than most people, even yeah. most artists that I've met. Um, so working conventional jobs or freelance work, even for me, like I'll only do that if I really need to. Yeah. Um, I think that like, <laughs> you know, it is an obvious compromise that everyone lives yeah. and as hard as it is to accept like nine times out of 10, you're a lot happier if you just kind of accept it yeah. and you're able to, I guess temper your expectations realistically right. um, so you're not setting yourself up for like disappointment like oh I'm not living my dream life I'm right. not living my dream career it's like maybe those dreams you had weren't really realistic right. Um, right. and that being said though I do think that people should still keep their mind open right. um, one amazing experience that I feel like I've been able to have is like you know like I have like I'm mostly just doing my own original thing for the yeah. past two years or so. And because I've gone pretty much all in on it, uh, I have, you know, I've gone to like random parties or gatherings and like different, you know, gatherings of people from like different industries that are outside of even just like the concept art, yeah. um, illustration world. And because I've been able to venture out though, I've been able to like meet and connect with these people. Right. And so I've gotten to be able to get to the point where like, you know, I have like management and I have yeah. like an office space. Um, and I have all these, like this network that really supports my ideas for my ideas because yeah. that's how they've gotten to know me. Yeah. Um, whereas I feel like if I didn't go on on that, and didn't keep the opportunity or at least my mind open to yeah. that possibility, you know, none of that would have happened. Right. Um, so obviously it's a risk. Like I'm not saying that that's like all guaranteed to happen right. and stuff, but like in the background though, I was still doing like freelance work. I was still making sure that I could Hustling like have stuff. food, <laughs> like have housing, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a balance. I'm what you're, you're always living. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I feel like, um, you know, that particular thing where you're able to pursue your own, like, I think every single artistic endeavor starts out with like emulating somebody else. If it's like fan art and selling like Naruto prints at a convention or, something, <laughs> or you know, like copying your favorite, like League of Legends, Riot, Splash Art or something. Yeah. You know? um, it's like, it, it always starts out as that like pure emulation. And then it can at a certain point deviate. Uh, like the more, the longer you do it, essentially, the more input you have and the more you're able to create something brand new out of that. You know, and it seems like um, that initial love of like, like, I, I'm sure that uh, the fear of like not doing it at a certain point was worse than actually failing at it, you know? Oh, I failed so many times. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> um, I think people just, ha everyone has such a bad memory, not in the sense that like we're all like developing dementia, but like... Right. You know, if you post something and it doesn't do well, no one's going to remember <laughs> no one cares, it. Like, yeah. yeah, literally no one cares. Like, <laughs> I think right. people, you care so much harder than everyone else cares. Well, and the flip side of that is if you post something really sick and everyone likes it, no one cares a week later, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. it's, it's like, everyone's so fickle. Yeah. And that's why I, like, think you need to just do stuff for you. Yeah. Um. Obviously, like, if your goal is to grow metrics, and sure, yeah, like, grow metrics, be cognizant of that, have your strategy, blah, blah, blah. But, like, don't let, like, one or two or even, like, three or five stumbles, like, make right. you feel like you are a failure. Yeah. Like, so many... I think everything's a numbers game, yeah. like, to zoom out a little bit. Like, there's so many tech companies that are just, like, the you know, they fix so many problems just because they keep throwing money at the problem or resources yeah. and then like there's so many content creators that are like have so many different runs until they finally find you know their footing right um and so if you're gonna just get discouraged because like oh you did one thing and it didn't do as well as you thought it's like well maybe this life isn't good for you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I feel like that there's like a spiritual element to that where it's like it's way more of like a relationship with failure and like letting go of your ego 
and yes. being okay with like I'm a I'm an idiot, you know, I'm a loser, I'm gonna fuck up. Yeah. You know? And being like okay with those inevitable mistakes that you're gonna make. I, I do this thing that I was oh my god, I was, I was just telling so many friends about this because there's like a recession happening right now, obviously. Yeah. And so like a lot of us maybe aren't doing as well. Yeah. And like these are people with huge followings too. Yeah. Um but it's like it's affecting everybody at all levels. Yeah. And I was just telling them like like I do this thing before any big drop release or anything that makes me nervous and kind of like come face to face to face with my like egos like that. I'd like to call it the friend, my friends and family still love me dance, yeah. which is like, I just, I guess they're like mantras or I take a day to just be like, you know, it's okay if this doesn't do well, yeah. you still have food, this, your life doesn't change. Right. Like, I think that's the biggest thing that I need to remember is like, I will literally wake up. This job could have not happened yeah. or it could totally bomb and my life will be completely unchanged. Yeah. Like I have friends who like deeply love me. I have family who deeply loves me. Um, I still have a bunch of opportunities on the horizon. This is literally one step out of like however many I'm going to take. Yeah. And, you know, taking a day to just like ground myself like that before anything, it really like keeps me centered. And Absolutely. yeah, and I think that's something maybe more people should consider um and since i've told my friends about this now they started like telling me like oh yeah like i actually feel you know genuinely yeah. better right. people don't know this but emotions actually only last like if you're like mad or sad um in an instant like chemically in your body it only lasts like a couple minutes at most right, right. um so like meditation and all that stuff is like so it's so important yeah yeah, yeah. well and i i think it's like and on a broader scale like being more than just a painter or more than just an artist like more than just somebody who makes projects like you know being someone's son or daughter or father you know co-worker employee like whatever like you're way more things than just a painter you know? yeah and i think like acknowledging those parts of yourself and not letting them die essentially i think is like a key form of making this stuff sustainable for your mental health you know yes um i definitely think that too many people nowadays like get either they pigeonhole themselves or they get pigeonholed into like the one label that they're known for. Yeah. Um, and it's so bad for anyone's mental health. Cause like every person is like a multidimensional yeah. being yeah. like, they're not just this like ha ha funny YouTube person. They're not right. just like this great artist, but you know, we only get to know somebody so much on like a, shallow like digital it's, level yeah, yeah, it's a single single-sided conversation type stuff yeah, yeah um but for yourself that's what i was saying like when i say sustainable i mean like i think you need to find in your own journey like all these little like tips and tricks that i'm talking about are like things that i've developed for myself to keep yeah. it sustainable um because it is really really hard yeah it's still really really hard to do this stuff like you're constantly facing like i guess all your weaknesses or yeah, things yeah, that you're yeah. afraid of um but that's also what makes it so cool and rewarding too because like when you do pop off or like you put all your heart and soul into something and it's like and it so, works yeah yeah you're just like oh my god yeah. and you like remember why you're doing it you know yeah yeah, yeah. well I, I guess that's part of like another important thing is that like it doesn't get easier like you like anyone no. <laughs> having a ton of money having a ton of followers or any of that stuff it, it's still hard you know? oh no it's <laughs> it i think it, it only gets harder the saying more money more problems more money more problems yeah so true yeah dude so true like oh my god like i okay there's so i fucking hate like on social media like you know all the little no off actually full offense there's like so many kids on with twitter accounts or yeah. instagram accounts that don't know any better because they're just kids yeah but they think an artist because they have like ten thousand or maybe like fifty thousand plus followers on some platform yeah. that they're like balling. Yeah, I'm just like you guys do not know. No idea. You have yeah. no idea right. like how the world works. Yeah. Um, it's not just social media. Right. Um, just because you have followers on anything doesn't mean that you just get paid. Yeah. Like you still have to leverage that. Yeah. Um, and there's also the inverse too, where I've met so many prolific artists, even just in different spaces, whether it's contemporary photography, yeah. and they have like zero followers but the, you know they work with such they have such a reputation Prolific, or yeah. right um and they're just they're just not in the social media space yeah, so it's right. just it's just a it's just another world out of many worlds yeah yeah um and i just like hate whenever people automatically think though like oh this person has a like big platform so they automatically like have it going Millions on dollars, and dollars. it's like have you ever tried to like run anything yeah. have you started a company have you produced and it's like if you haven't and every answer to all these questions is a no right. just don't just don't talk like you you, you right. do not know how hard it is to start right. maintain 
and then to keep like keep starting and maintaining keep something it. yeah well, and people look at that and you know it enforces this idea that you should be further along than you are you know which i mm. think is another thing that does like that's a trap that a lot of people get caught in you know yeah like, yeah I, I have x amount of followers so i should be making this amount of money you know yeah um and i i guess it's like it goes i think again to a broader scale of like um like the external motivation external, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the external motivations and like uh pressures from other people you know it's like someone might really want to go to art school not because they actually really want to go but because their parents say they should get a degree you know? oh yeah which i i find that's like that's actually extremely common you know yeah um, that was uh, the case for me <laughs> yeah yeah right it, it was the case for me as well for a long time and then i dropped out <laughs> I, was, I, was like, I, oh. I dropped out too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right>. nice <laughs> yeah hell yeah dude um well and it, it's it's like a, I think a big part of all this stuff is like figuring out like what do you actually care about you know it's like beyond your parents beyond your significant other or siblings or friends or whatever like what is the thing that you like love more than anything you know that you'd be doing for free until the end of time no matter what you know the journey of self-actualization this fucking fly yeah, is yeah. like so into this <laughs> podcast <laughs> um yeah the journey of self-actualization is a lifelong one for yeah. sure um I don't even think many people even know what that like means. I mean, I didn't for a long time. I feel like I I don't. You know, it's it's, like, it's a it's a term yeah. from like psychology. Yeah, well, I I, I guess I, I know the term, but I feel like I go through phases where I think I know everything, and then I I realize I'm like I don't. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, yeah. I feel like that's yeah. so that's totally normal. Yeah. Um, like self actualization specifically is just like. I think it's like Carl Jung. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he basically had his whole theory of how people become whole, like yeah. in and of themselves. And I, I please do not quote me on any of this because yeah. I don't remember. But there's like, you know, like the male aspect to you, the female aspect to you, yeah. and these are all like psychologically, not like Archetypes physical parts. Stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, you're like super ego. You're yeah. like id, and what I, I don't know all the parts, but basically when you get in touch and get to know every parts of yourself. Oh, there's like the shadow side, yeah. the light side. Um, and you, it, and it's, it's, it's something you have to be committed to is the yeah. thing too. Um, but if you commit yourself to deeping, diving deeper and learning all these corners of yourself and facing all your fears, basically it's called the process of self actualization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's where you, I don't want to say you become like independent and whole and happy on your own, but you find purpose, right? you, you find purpose and you know who you are. Yeah. And because you know who you are, you have clear direction in like every situation of life, basically. Yeah. Right. Um, and I find that a lot of people just in humanity in general, but especially artists, because art is so hard. Uh, yeah. Like people don't even get a chance to dive into that yeah. because we just live in such a, Right. like oppressive capitalist world. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I feel like one of the advantages of being an artist and it, it could be seen as a disadvantage as well, but you're like showing your true self to people in a lot of ways, mm. you know, like you're showing your paintings. It's like when you're a nurse or a police officer and your day doesn't go that well, it's like the collective of that precinct or that hospital that didn't do well. But when you don't sell your paintings and you're at a place where you can sell them, then you're being judged like every everyone's overlooking you you know so it's oh, like an yeah. opportunity to be like oh man like i'm either a complete loser or i have somewhere else to go i have something to improve on you know mm. and i think depending on how you look at those two problems it's like that's like you're like either feeding the shadow self or the light self part of you know yeah i mean at, at the end of the day that's a situation of itself where you like learn about what you're about right yeah, yeah like some people yeah they would definitely look at that situation and be like oh i have to improve or maybe depending on why you make art like it totally just depends but like if you make art for yourself and you just don't give a fuck about other right. people's opinions you yeah. know you could just be like fuck off or yeah. whatever i don't know <laughs> right right yeah. either side is totally valid too it yeah. comes down to whatever you're looking for well, I, I i and i i guess i'm i'm like on the fence about believing in free will or not you know mm. it's like uh, you don't choose. <laughs> We're getting like deep. <laughs> well, no, no, yeah, no, that's the whole point. I mean, it, it, but, but it's like, like, like you see something like New York Comic Con or San Diego Comic Con, where like millions of people come from all over the world to go to this place. You're spending lots of money to buy like, which is which is like effectively just like ink on paper or like 
you know, mm. uh, plastic made into like a Thor figure or something. Yeah. And it, it's like arbitrary from one perspective, but then there's like a deeper, like, why do people like, I, I think that like someone going from like Japan to art center is like some, like it's like the equivalent to me as like, somebody traveling to mecca for a holy pil- pilgrimage uh-huh. you know it's like wanting to study with james take or something yeah or, or like jeff watts or whoever or one of the famous art teachers is like in a sense like a religious experience for a lot of people you know yeah um and i, I think that like uh i forgot what it, i forgot what i was saying you were talking about like free will <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. i don't know if i believe in free will because it's like like we do these things that we can't explain why, you know, and it's like, mm. you don't choose your gender. You don't choose who you're born. You don't choose who your parents are, your race, your like r- really much, you know? So a lot of those things influence what you like and care about, you know? And I, th- I think there's a great book that I read called chaos. Um, I, I haven't heard of it. Um, it's literally just, it's literally just called chaos. Yeah. Um, and it's nonfiction, but it's just about how like, chaos theory and physics um came up and kind of the history of how all the scientists even like came together come to nova in the first place and it gets pretty philosophical um it definitely tackles like eastern versus western philosophies and logic um definitely tackles like free will and uh i will say in my limited time of when i was like a very shallow hobbyist like physics like studier um i think everything in life as far as we can tell is pretty paradoxical so in the sense like when we try to control or contain it like the double slit experiment if you know what that is yeah yeah Yeah, so like when you when they're trying to observe it um it had a totally different result from when they just let it be right and that's like kind of just I think so many things in life in general, right. whether it's relationships or even like even drawing, yeah, yeah, being a painter. Yeah. yeah right. Like yeah, when yeah, you're, same thing. yeah. When you're like just noodling and like really, really trying to control what's happening, you know, the piece turns out usually like kind of funky, kind of, right. kind of shitty. Yeah. Uh, yeah right. <laughs> but when you just like let it flow and you're like in the zone and like the flow state or whatever yeah. and you're just letting things happen yeah. um that's usually when your best work comes out yeah. and it's like skateboarding too even sometimes like when you're trying to land a trick like almost nine times out of ten you're gonna get it when you like aren't fucking trying yeah 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 um so i think that's just a great paradox of life and how that applies to free will is that i think that like a lot of chaos because it gets into like quantum mechanics and stuff so you have like different quantum worlds or parallel universes i almost feel like there's just so many different possibilities that are possible in one single instant that it's like paradoxically like yeah it's like technically calculable so maybe we don't have free will but it's also we can't calculate it i I, I think i think i essentially (laughs) like i effectively have free will because i can't see every single string attached to me that's pulling me in all these directions yeah and I, i think um something like uh, painting or any like stuff. Like I, you, you either believe it's completely random or there's something else, some like purpose to it. And I, I think to me, that's my idea of whatever God is, you know, mm. it's like, I think you're assigned like an identity and you're assigned a purpose, you know, and you're meant to spend your entire life looking for whatever that pur- purpose is, you know, it's like, and how you respond to being like the, yeah, either like the least successful or the most successful in the room person in the room will show you that purpose you know and it's like i I think that the more you're able to i I sound super corny and i I know how i sound but 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 it's like the more you're able to lean into that like uh true self the more likely i think you'll be able to actually be successful you know oh yeah no a hundred percent yeah like whatever you're actually supposed to be doing um i tell there's like some quote from a book that i read i don't remember what book but it was like if don't bother blooming in a field of tulips if you're like a rose right Right. um and so many times i think we're just always trying to fit in into places that maybe aren't like working for us um and like a lot of times we just don't really know better like we don't know that there's like other pathways that even exist uh but like genuine generally speaking um 
I don't like see a lot of situations as like absolutes. Like I don't think there's black and white, right or wrong for like a lot of things in life. Yeah. And so a lot of times if something's just not working for you, I don't think it means that you're a failure or you're, you know, like you're not capable or it's a problem with you. I think a lot of times maybe you're just not in the right environment or the right space. Um and kind of how that comes back to like what you were saying, like everyone has a purpose and you're kind of looking for it. There's like really interesting creationists, like we call them like myths now, yeah. but there's just like lore from like ancient cultures where like some of them they'll say humanity really was just like one big being. Yeah. And then we like disperse into smaller beings. And so, yeah. so we're all just like one big ecosystem. We all have like our, our own parts and pieces. Yeah. yeah. Um, but together, you know, the sum is greater than the whole. Right. Um, so there's like a couple, like, I guess, I don't I don't want to call them like theories, yeah. but like myths you know, and archetypes and stuff. Yeah, like there's definitely like cultures and lines of thought that right. ascribe to that, and those cultures tend to be a lot more like community based. Right. And you know, here being the U.S., we just live very like individualistically. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like so when I was in, in 2021, I drove to New York and back, and I had another van that was a lot shittier. It was, it was when I met you. I was I was staying at uh, Modern Day James's house. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and living in his and, and essentially in, his, in the front of his house, but uh, and I I find I found that like everyone has the same problems. You know, everyone is worried about money or relationships or kids or identity or career. All that stuff is a universal thing. Whether you're mm -hmm. in Europe or Japan or somewhere in Montana, everyone's worried about that stuff. And I think it's like, like it sounds crazy to say that we're all the same person, but it's also fucking bizarre that you could be 5,000 miles away from somebody and they are also anxious about like, you know, like, are they going to get that promotion or not? You know, it's like this weird thing that I, I think that, like the more empathy you have for that, I think the more, like the better of an ability you have to forgive yourself for like mm. your shortcomings as a human being, mm. you know? Um, like I, I'm sure that like every single like person at the top of like this hierarchy of art, like, you know, whether it's like somebody directing a giant movie or not, they're looking at someone else and being like, oh, they're way better than me. I'm a loser. I'm a fraud. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Oh no, a hundred percent. I I don't think I don't think the human experience ever changes. I think it just you yeah. either just get have more shit in your life because you're at a different tier or yeah. like stage, but like essentially the emotions are all the same. Right. Like there's so many there's so many like crazy successful people quote that I like, you know, relative to most that I've yeah. met and seen. It's just like all the same dynamics. Yeah. Like they're still insecure. They're still worrying about the next thing. Like, sure. Maybe there's like, I guess way more going into it than like a lemonade stand, but right. like, it's still the same experience. Right. Um, I feel like it's really humbling actually. Cause like a lot of times I think, like for me, I have this problem. I'll be like, "Oh my god!" Like no one understands my problems. They're like, oh, "I'm so so." I'd like, "Uh, woe is me." But like you know, like take two seconds to like listen to anyone else or like really open my mind up. And it's just like everyone has the same problems. Like right. everyone has the same worries. We all worry about our families. We all want to just make sure we're taken care of. Like we want to be well liked. We want to feel secure. Yeah um like sh that manifests in different ways like in different people for sure but at your core like when you said like empathy like yeah like i definitely think um at least right now like there's so much fear in the world for good reason but yeah. at the same time i don't think you fix a lot of like these barriers that have been like set up between all, all of us i don't think you fix that with more fear because yeah. at the end of the day we're all the same people and we all have the same desires and worries yeah. so yeah. i think what needs to happen is you just need to like open your mind and like hard up and just have a little empathy yeah yeah well and i guess the crazy part about all this stuff is that like everything is happening like somebody's being like tortured in syria or some or, <laughs> or it, well also someone is writing like space mountain at disneyland right yeah it's like both perspectives exist you know oh yeah and it's like it's such a strange thing to come to philosophically you know and i think that like um i don't know i, I think it's really easy to be in a position where you're not suffering physically and all that kind of stuff and not i feel almost guilty for it you know I, yeah, I mean, you don't like you said earlier. You don't choose yeah. the life that you're given. Yeah. Um, yeah. and in that same way, like, 
I think it's easy to harbor resentment for people. Like I see this on social media all the time. People are like, Oh my God, like, I don't know, like Nepo babies, yeah, maybe yeah. for instance, yeah. I I'm, I'm not a Nepo baby. I, I, I am a Nepo baby a little bit. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just feel like, like, okay. Like my sister, my younger sister, she got into Harvard yeah. and Harvard obviously has a lot of Nepo babies. Yeah, yeah. So she's just like telling me day to day, her experiences being in LA for the past couple of years, like any big city, I've just come across like trust fund kids or yeah. whatever. And you would, you want to think, especially cause I grew up poor and yeah. I feel like I wasn't, ever going to touch those worlds like you grow up thinking like oh their life is so easy or like this or that but it's like you said everyone is the same everyone wants the same things and in a lot of different ways their lives are hard and ways are just different from yours like maybe they do have that basic like you know housing and they don't ever have to worry about money but what i've seen a lot of times is their relationships are awful. Um, they, there's a lot of like politics and just fakeness. Um, no depth. People want you for things that you like, like external things that you have. Yeah. Or, or even just really on a basic level, because they grew up different for everyone else in that way, they feel very alienated and alone. Right. Um, and so I've seen a lot of these kids are just like, you know, addicted to drugs or they don't really, know what like a real close like friendship is um and that in its own way is like really really sad right um so i think yeah it's just like a matter of perspective honestly i I feel like it's it's from a certain perspective like learning to love yourself for your faults and for your perceived shortcomings and for everything that you do have yeah you know it's like if you're not a great painter it's like being okay with that and still saying the things you want to say in spite of like not necessarily like be able to perform or have as many followers or whatever as someone else you know yeah um yeah it's so hard because we live in such a social media driven world for sure yeah um but i do think it's really 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 important for people like for whoever's going to view this like there's so many successful awesome people i know that are like not on social media so there's literally a whole world out there like go out explore and i think what has worked for me is the reason why I've even been able to like see and experience these spaces is because I've kept true to myself. Yeah. And that's obviously not an easy thing to do, but like when it came to, for instance, like deciding, do I just want to work freelance and be a studio artist for the rest of my life? And do I want to make my portfolio like really good to work at this big like studio, you know, I decidedly told myself like, no, because I couldn't see myself doing that for a long time. And also it's not what I wanted to do. Um, like I just, I know I just hate my life if I did that. So I was like, I, as scary as it is, like I need to go all in on this and I need to have conviction in myself, but also just keep trusting the process where if even certain spaces turn you away, it's going to lead you to the places you need to be. Yeah. Um, and I think people are just for good reasons, obviously they're like afraid to do that. Yeah. Right. Well, and I, I feel like that that's always the scary thing about being like an artist professionally is taking that leap of faith that, you know, you will be chosen, you know? And mm. the, the other flip side of that is there's no incorrect decision in that choice. You know? No, I think, I think every path is valid. Like you make your decisions for a reason at the time, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and I think that like someone that might be listening to this, that is at a studio job that like may, maybe that is the path that they that's the correct path and they're like looking at another thing as like you know them like aspiring for more in like a negative way or something you know? no i think i literally don't think there's a right or wrong and yeah, i don't yeah, think anything right. is any less or better yeah like I, there's artists i think it should be more celebrated honestly when artists have jobs and then they do art on the side yeah like there's literally no shame in that you don't have to do the whole rock star right, right. this or that like be be realistic like right. i still take freelance work people will do whatever they need to do to pay their bills right. um like it's yeah, <laughs> yeah like, 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 trying to be like a famous artist or something right yeah just yeah. i don't know do what you got to do <laughs> yeah um well I, I feel like people look at their ideals they look at the people that you know got them into art in the first place and they use that as their basis for what an artist is you mm. know? and it's like that initial definition it's, it's hard for that to change unless someone is like confident enough in their own tastes and their own sensibilities to like deviate from that, like initial, like, Oh, I saw, you know, this person do an awesome drawing live. And now I, that's, that's what I want to be, instead, mm-hmm. you know? Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I think all this stuff is like, it's like surreally simple, you know, it's like, <laughs> like just trust yourself and like do what you want to do. I know, they sound like don't such platitudes, but yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I hate to say it, but like it yeah. is, it is like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a, do you know a, a Morgan Weisling? I do actually, yeah. 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 I, I had him on at one point and he uh, was telling me, you know, I never thought about it that hard. You know, I just, I just painted, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? Like, like, I thought, I thought you were supposed to think about it and like, you know. I, I don't think, but, I think supposed is such a good word. Yeah. You're not supposed to do anything. Yeah. No one is asking of you literally anything. Yeah. If yeah. you wanted to wake up and dedicate your life to just not doing the thing that you've been doing, yeah. you can do that. Yeah. And like, no one cares. And if someone does care, well, you just learned maybe you shouldn't care about what they have to say. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, and, and it's like, I, I'm finding that like, oh man, I could just like overthink all this stuff to a crazy degree. And I, I, I could still have a pretty valid voice. Whereas like someone could just sit around and paint and like, you know, just do what they love doing and not go beyond just the fa- like just accept yeah. that they love it and that be totally fine as well you know i think another approach to this like whole perspective though it's like sometimes um like overthinking for instance which i do i do that all the time too um like maybe you just need to find like the right environment where that's yeah, yeah. not like necessarily a detriment but it's like actually like conducive yeah. to whatever you're trying to do because like um what was the book i forget but the book was basically talking about how you know, we live in a world, at least here, where people who are more sensitive and like kind of empathetic and prone to seeing things before they happen yeah. um, are less valued just because we live in such an individualistic society. But like back in the days, you know, when we're like in tribes and stuff, they were like the shamans or the people, like the oracles, yeah. the people that would um, kind of guide like soldiers or generals into making their master plans. Yeah. And I think that there's a time and place to like, maybe instead of labeling what you're doing as like negative, like, yeah. oh, I'm just overthinking. It's like, maybe you could just think about it as like, I don't know, it's just saying like, yeah, just yeah, to yeah, you sure. personally, I just mean like right. this idea that, oh, we're doing something wrong or like yeah. psychologically, there's something messed up with me. I genuinely feel like more people are like people, most people are pretty fucking normal. We're just like trying to like put a label and everything. And we yeah. just live in a fucked up society. So it's right. like, not you. Oh yeah. 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 hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Like it's just, you just need to find the right time and space or right. people, you know? Well, yeah, I think people are reaching for an, like, like an identity and acceptance and validation. Mm, yeah. And I think those, like, I think it's, I think it's fine to want to be validated. It's fine to want followers and money on all. I think that's actually totally natural. I think know? it's, I think it's, I've accepted that I do want those things. I want those things a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Who, who, who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Well, and I, I think from like a, I'm not a Christian. I've been saying this a lot recently, but uh, I'm not a Christian, but I believe in like the, uh, like the idea of original sin is that, you know, it's like, you can't ever become like a Buddha or Jesus Christ or Muhammad because you're just not perfect. Like you, want things that will inevitably uh put you at a crossroads with choosing to do the right thing the right thing and like the things you actually truly want you know and i think part of forgiveness is like accepting like oh man i want to pursue uh having like a big instagram following or selling prints or something or making money making youtube videos getting attention and then uh like accepting that there are going to be some consequences to that at some point, you know? Yeah. 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 It's definitely a pros and cons. Yeah. For yeah. sure. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I definitely feel you on like, um, if you get into like more like spiritual circles, the concept of God becomes more abstract in the sense that it's less like, so like this overarching being that yeah. a lot of us are taught from a young age and more so like this concept of like acceptance and, um, recognizing, you know, the possibilities in life. Yeah. Uh, so I guess like what that means and like, like basic terms you know like love empathy yeah, yeah. all that right. stuff that we would attribute with like a good god is yeah, just like it's right. i think i think a lot of spiritual people or guides try to lead you to understand that you have that within yourself yeah um and i think that's what like finding god is yeah. uh, in a lot of those circles yeah yeah well, yeah I, I think my de- definition of god is, is something that's like outside of time that 
is everything and is everywhere. Like, like it's it's something that's like outside of time and place and all that. So. Yeah, you should um read uh stuff about like the Carl Jung psychology stuff because yeah, yeah. he gets into like the subconscious. I started um, reading his biography a little bit. Okay, yeah. I didn't know he had a biography. I, 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 I think he. I think it was his biography. I, I might be totally. I, I read a like Nietzsche, Carl Jung. Biography. Oh, oh no, they that they did yeah. they did make a book together. Yeah. yeah, right. Um. Well, I was just I was just mentioning it because he goes on a lot about like the subconscious and kind of how yeah. throughout history, human history, we've like always had these like symbols or archetypes that hold the same meaning for us, no matter yeah. where we come from. Um, and I think that it kind of speaks a little bit to how you're talking about, like to you, God is like kind of everywhere all yeah. at once. It's like, I do think there is some kind of crazy fabric weaving this all together in the background. Yeah. We just can't, we're not really able to perceive it. But it's definitely there. And actually, I take that back. I do think we can perceive it. Yeah. I just don't think it's one of those things that you like put into words because it's yeah. like almost defeats the purpose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it, I think it's sometimes hard to pay attention to with the sh- like pressures of life and mortgages, paying rent, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, I there's a part of me that believes that like the only way to like become a fully realized person is to like live in the woods and just like, uh, <laughs> I don't believe that. I, like there's a small part of me that's like, yeah, that sounds pretty nice. Just to not have I feel it. like we've all had the like alone in the woods yeah. thought, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the, the Christopher Camelis into the wild type stuff. I think it's like a trauma response yeah. to like living in the world that we live in. I think so a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's pretty extreme. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've done it a little bit just because I live, I live in a van. Oh my god! Like, oh wait, yeah, I yeah. can imagine. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Well, so, so I'm curious. Like, why do you think people resonate with your artwork so much? Like, like do they? I mean, I mean, like, I mean, they do. You know, it's yeah. People, I, from from what I can tell, people, a lot of people care about it. You know. Yeah. Um. Well, fortunately, yeah, I do think. I feel like. You know, I feel this is like really stupid. I'm like, oh man, it feels like self righteous. But like, yeah, I do think a lot of people resonate with my work. Um, but I don't even necessarily think it's because the skill is like good. Um, like you were saying earlier, I think anyone can learn how to draw, to be yeah. honest. Like, especially nowadays with YouTube and all that. Like, yeah. I taught myself how to draw and right. I'm like one of the laziest people I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I feel like if I can do it, maybe a lot more people can do it. Yeah. Um, but as far as my art in particular, I think I've just had like such a roundabout like way of learning life where I almost feel like I live life in reverse. Yeah. Um, and I'm at the stage now where I'm just like playing around and just doing whatever I want. Yeah. And then in the beginning though, I had like the whole, like, I guess figured out formula thing. Like I was doing like content and like making stuff for like big like streamers and gamers. Yeah. Um, and I like, I had to run with that, learned a lot about the dynamics of the world. Um, and I will say it's like all the same, no matter what industry or how, how high or low you are, it's all the same dynamics because yeah. people are all the same. And cause I learned all that early on cause I was like a teenager. Um, I think once the pandemic hit and I was like at this stage mentally, or it's like, I just really don't give a fuck. I, like have been through so much i've seen so much um yeah. don't really care about a lot of people's opinions like that anymore yeah. it's very freeing um i just started drawing whatever i wanted and that's kind of when things really took off for me yeah. and it's like that i feel like every artist says this but it's just like when you start drawing what you actually want and yeah. like instead of trying to copy somebody that's when things will happen for you but it's right. like and it's so true though like it actually is and it's really annoying well i guess i guess the <laughs> weird part about that is like you know, knowing a bunch of students or knowing a bunch of, like, um, like knowing to some degree that like some people want to be doing something else, but they might be stuck in like a figurative trap, you know, where mm. they're doing nothing but figure studies or something. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, like they might say that they want to do something else, but they're, they don't, you know, it's, they, it's weird. I yeah. think you can have multiple things true at the same time. Yeah. Like, I think you can totally say, I want to do this thing, but I also want to do these figure studies because yeah. I don't want to be on the streets later. Right. And it's totally possible to have those three desires and they can be all as equal. And yeah. that's why it's so 
frustrating and you feel so much um, conflict inside because each side is valid. Yeah. Um, but to, to I, I just realized I went off track. I do this yeah. all the time. I was yeah. like, to answer yeah. your question <laughs> though, way, yeah. yeah, to answer your question though, I feel like the reason why people resonate with my work, and I feel this goes for any artist, um, it's because, you know, I just was really candid about like my feelings. Yeah. Uh, and I think when you're candid and open, especially about a lot of my early works were about how I felt the pressures of like being in the limelight or on social yeah. media, like a lot of anxieties I feel about it. And that's a very like, you know, on trend relevant topic for yeah. a lot of people nowadays. Um, you know, like I think it's just, all it takes is like one person to like just really be candid and clear about right. how it's affecting everyone yep. and then everyone kind of takes a step to like s just like steep in that moment yep. um and uh it's like you said like we're all the same yeah and i think that's the power of art is when you're able to connect that person in japan to your my voice here yeah. in like the u.s and it's like we've had the same shared experience even right. though we're different people and we were able to communicate and feel it through the art yeah um and so i feel like that's why a lot of people personally resonate with mine uh and i mean i think stylistically sure it's like colorful and stuff too but at the end of the day though um like i've done a couple of these podcasts and people seem to like really identify with and this is just a greater theme that I feel that I've noticed in my life is like, you know, we're always trying to put on this like image of something that's polished. That's yeah. pretty. That's like, um, finished and, and it has their shit together. Right. But then when you look at my work, you know, I've been told like, there's something more though. And when yeah. you really analyze it, it's like, there's like this somber, the sadness and it's something yeah. that is realistic behind the scenes. Right. And I guess that's pretty reflective of my experiences growing up. Um, well, I, I, I think I think everyone fundamentally just wants to be validated, you know. And yeah. I think when somebody sees an image, there's some like unspoken language there that that does validate some feelings that I think everyone has to some degree. That that in some sense are like taboo to talk about. Talking about anxiety in some circles mm. might be seen as like weak or uncomfortable or something, you know. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, having like paying attention to those feelings inside anyone paying attention to those feelings inside themselves and putting them down in an image some way and translating them like that's i think the way people reach like massive scale you know it's like trying to hit like a, a chord of what people like really fundamentally care about like at an unspoken level you know? yeah yeah the unspoken thing is so true and i think that's why art needs to exist and i think that's why artists should be allowed to truly express themselves in their art even if it gets not like controversial but you know it can get a little like gritty yeah um like i think you know taking it back to social media like a lot of the anxiety that i feel because i am an artist is like i feel like i chose to be an artist because i have all these feelings and things i want to share that you can't necessarily just say yeah and you know we're like ever increasingly getting into a world where it's like harder and harder to like be like that yeah um and I just look through like music history, for instance, yeah. if every musician, if you like isolated every instance of what they did and you're like, that was horrible or yeah. like they're, they should be canceled or whatever, then we wouldn't have like 99.99% yeah. right. of music. We wouldn't have 99.99% of art. Yeah. I'm right. not saying that people shouldn't be held accountable for what they do, but I don't like obviously there's like bad things like don't murder somebody or whatever right but like for if someone is just a human being yeah. and especially if they're an artist i think a lot of us can acknowledge as artists we chose this path because we already don't feel like we fit in yeah so further ostracizing or making it even harder to create in a space that should feel free yeah um that's like that's like ironic right well yeah. i i think i think when somebody creates something they're not that idea you know they're not like they're just trying to like channel whatever that feeling is, yeah. you know, and it like, whether it's something really heroic or something really brave or something, they're put, that person is still fundamentally flawed, you know? Right. And you can go down the list of like, you know, like Norman Rockwell apparently wasn't a great father, you know, in spite of like painting these, like the iconic Americana family life stuff. Yeah. Know? And it's like, there's this irony there where Norman Rockwell was seen as this guy essentially paint, like creating Americana, you know? And he was, uh, on the surface, like essentially like a fraud, you know? Right. And it's like, do you throw away Norman Rockwell's paintings because of that? You know? And I think the answer is probably no. 
you know. I don't know. It's it's well that's the thing too, is art is a personal experience for everybody. Yeah. So if you as a viewer, if you're if you have such values that you wanna you don't want to respect Norman Rockwell like that, then yeah. fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. Like that's your life and that's how you want to live it. But if somebody else their his work resonated with them in such a way they didn't even know that about him as a dad, yeah. like that's a totally different situation. And right. I feel like you can't tell somebody how to like live their life, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. Well I think uh like it's part of the problem I see with the like parasocial, like one way sided element of oh, yeah. social media is that <laughs> it is, it is that one sided conversation, you know, it's like, yeah. even for the people listening to this, you're listening to two people you will likely, <laughs> likely never meet, you know, yeah. talk about this stuff. And it's like, um, y- y- you know, like, you know, a lot about us so far than we know about you. And it's this weird, like, um, like people are going to assume things no matter what you know right they're, they're gonna build a character around you or because I, I think that's just the way the human brain works like you don't see everything so you have to abstract things and mm, yeah have like a very blurry ver- vision of what whatever it is you know um and i was gonna say something else i was super smart but i totally forgot <laughs> <it>. <laughs> no you've been so smart this uh, whole time I, no, I, i'm always worried that i sound like a you know, like a pseudo more intellectual. Uh, who cares? <laughs> Listen to me. I'm like, oh my god, this big. Oh my god. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just don't really care. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think uh, when it comes to, I, I meet a lot of people who are like looking for that purpose, that like, no, like almost like permission to start listening to themselves. You know, mm. and I, I feel like at a certain point like you starting to do whatever you want or uh like really like anyone doing the things they want to do it starts with like confronting some amount of trauma and then like some like failure as well or the trauma just happens yeah right like yeah. I, I will say very personally for me i've had a lot of traumatic things happen in my yeah, life so yeah. it pushed me to a point right. quite literally where i just did not give a fuck anymore yeah like it was like i'm gonna live my life for how i want to live it on my terms i don't care yeah. like i have went through the due process right. like this didn't magically happen i didn't wake up and i was like i'm gonna draw this way and live yeah. this way and be this person it was like just a really horribly painful, right. just awful chiseling away right. of like so many things and being turned away or feeling like that outcast or just re- asking myself what's wrong with me. Yeah. And in some, at some point I feel like I really do think it's a choice at the end of the day. Maybe you don't make it like immediately, but at some point you kind of just get up and you're like, you know, do I care enough about my life? Do I care enough about myself to, do the thing that I know will make me happy. Yeah. And do I care, do I care more about that than I care about all these things that I'm afraid of? Right. And whether you just decide to do it or life pushes you to do that or both, yeah. like, you know, that's kind of how it happens for a lot of people. Right. Um, I've met so many successful people who have what, gone through what I call the struggle bus period. Yeah. And they've gone through multiple. Yeah. So people who have had everything and gone and then lost it all and gone yeah. to nothing right. and then build it all back again and then lost it again yeah. and then build it like life is so long, even though it feels short. And we're always so pressured to be like, I need to figure it out like now. Yeah. Like I need to get all my ducks in a row and then I can do this thing. And it's like, no, like you're already living in this moment. Yeah. And like, just because like you, you don't have to just choose one thing to do yeah, right, yeah, you know? right. yeah. um but there's so many people that you don't know their full story so when you meet them you're just like like let's say you miss, read some you meet some rich dude it's like maybe you don't know how he like wasn't rich his whole life and right. then he had to like work his way up and then yeah. he like lost it all and he made it all back again like you really don't know well i, I mean going back to me being a little bit of a nepo baby my, my dad uh, worked at like wildstorm uh, for a big portion of career mm. then he ran like marble and stuff oh, okay and uh like i i spent a big portion of my life around these super famous comic artists and through that just a lot of people in the entertainment industry and i've met some insanely wealthy people who have been like depressed you know oh yeah like people on the verge <laughs> of being billionaires who are like you know like their best friend killed themselves on a i mean it's level, so you know? it's so yeah. isolating yeah right <laughs> Is that, sorry, what? I was just saying it's like so gotta be so isolating, but yeah, you can go on. Well, and it's yeah, yeah, being having that insane level of wealth, it's like um I, I found that some of the people that I've talked to have had trouble pursuing like something like being creative or painting because it's like 
you know, if you could either paint a painting and spend like a lot, like hundreds of hours learning how to paint or thousands of hours learning how to paint, or you could do something that makes a hundred million dollars, you know? And it's like, from one perspective, like, of course you should do the thing that makes you a hundred million dollars, you know, but, um, uh, like pursuing, like giving yourself permission to do, to paint instead of choosing the thing that's like a lot more efficient from society's perspective. I, I think it's in, in a lot of ways, that's like an act of bravery that a lot of people don't take. You know? Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, yeah. And I, I think, uh, like the more eyeballs on you that you have, or the more pressure that you have, the harder it is to, to be creative. I think. I think the modern punk nowadays is someone who chooses to do whatever they want yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it is so hard to do that nowadays because yeah. we do have a million eyes on us. Um, this is a good ending note, by the way, if we're like yeah. going way too long. Oh, no, no, I, I go for as long as. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I was just saying, like, I think that's why the process, of, <laughs> the process of self actualization. See, like, listen to me. I sound like the pseudo intellectual, <laughs> but like, just the process of learning what it is you actually care about. Yeah. Um, that's why that's so important because that's when, in those moments where you're like, do I care about making a hundred million or do I actually really just care about being a painter? Yeah. Like that's when those moments are decided for you right. because you already figured out like, no, I actually don't really want to like shill and yeah. dedicate the next 10 years of my life to being this like insanely wealthy person. Yeah. So, like I actually just really want to feel like painting right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I, I, I think there are a couple of things. It's like, you actually have to make a choice or you're like, if you don't make a choice, the choice is going to be made for you. Yeah. That's which, also which true. I think sucks. You know, it's like, if you don't do anything, that's going to be the choice, you know, that is true too. Yeah. yeah and yeah it's like inaction is like the worst thing for someone's spirit maybe. right yeah because you're not even like feeling the satisfaction of like make having made a choice yeah um but that yeah that is actually really really true that even if you don't make a choice like a choice is gonna happen yeah. um which i i think it's tragic actually you know it's yeah like, like, um like like entropy and uh like entropy is a real thing you know oh yeah no for sure yeah. uh, well and the other side of that is like I, I had a like this this rich guy tell me something about the fisherman's fallacy once where it's like this uh this guy is fishing on a dock and this guy comes up to him and he says like oh you, you know if you start fishing you can save up for a boat and then once you get a boat you can start fishing more you can hire employees and then you can buy a fleet and then eventually you can make a like a corporation and then you can sell the corporation and then you could retire early and he's like why would i do that so you can do whatever you want all day and he's like i'm doing what i want already i'm fishing you know yeah and i think for a lot of people you really don't need a lot of money to do the things you really want to be doing you know oh no yeah i think um i mean okay this sound, that sounds this sounds so insensitive yeah. but like i feel like that's why like once you reach a certain income um a lot of the pressure we feel to like succeed or have x things it's really extraneous and like most times you really actually don't need that much yeah especially like digital art like what do you actually really need you just need yeah. like a computer room electricity yeah <laughs> internet yeah. uh yeah. The, the programs yeah. your tablet and then like you're pretty good to go yeah. you can uh, do that in like iowa you know or yeah sorry, like, for, you know anywhere right i just feel like we and i'm not saying that i'm above any of this at all i feel it more than anyone i feel like yeah. um but, you know, we just live in a world where we feel like we're just automatically taught from the beginning at X stage of your life, you should have this figured out, you should yeah. do this, you should. And I think the word is the should and yeah. the supposed, like, I'm supposed to be this way, or I'm yeah. supposed to have this now. And it's like, you need to really step back and realize those are like programmed into you yeah. and taught to you. And it's nothing, you, like, you literally don't have to do any of that. And everyone is thinking that too. And I, I think the, the weirdest part about all this stuff is like the reality of our situation right now is we're on a rock flying through space yeah like circling a giant pla ball of plasma that's like a trillion degrees in like a sea of infinite nothingness with like a billion other galaxies and universes and all this stuff and it's like we can somehow worry about like a jpeg not being good enough or something you know it's like this weird like you know the, the more you zoom out the more it's like apparently like I, it, it sounds nihilistic when I talk this way, but it's, it's like obviously <laughs> nihilistic. So yeah. not doing the things you want to do, I think is a little bit silly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like 
at the end of the day, you just got to figure out what you care about. Like, yeah. I'll be so real. I do care about the followers. Yeah. I do care about making money. I yeah. do care about maintaining and get, reaching a certain lifestyle. And I'm very candid and frank about that with yeah. myself. So I like, no, I have to do X, Y, and Z things to do it. Yeah. Um, but that being said, it's like, it's for just other people, that's just not true. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of people I know that are so happy and they're like not rich and they yeah. don't do any of those things. They really don't care. And that's the point is that they're happy because they don't care. Yeah. But that's also just who they are. Right. If you feel like you need to have different things to be happy, even if you feel like they're quote, like shallow or whatever, like let's say you do care about followers. Yeah. That's totally fine. Yeah. Like that's just a different type of validation. What, for whatever reasons you want it. I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist or whatever, yeah. but like, you can totally want those things and it's totally fine and you just got to do you. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to whether you're happy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I think it, it does sound like a good ending point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Damn, yeah. we covered a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, the point of this is to, like, I, I think, you know, people see the artist on Instagram or they see them at the convention and they don't know that person, you know? Mm, yeah. And it's like the point sure. of this is like, who, who are, who are these people, you know, beyond just like, their art you know? no that's that's so cool i i appreciate this um i love talking i love talking about the things that aren't the art honestly i yeah. feel like the art space why do we only talk about art <laughs> well, why do we why do we only talk about how to fucking shade a sphere dude i don't I know mean? but yeah. it's like there's so many variations of this already like i just like google like <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's so easy and it's like uh i i think i really believe that most people who have art teachers don't need our teachers they need like therapists more so than anything a hundred percent people just want like spirit I'm, guides <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah i'm not saying i'm not saying that anyone is wrong for people for want us. like parents <laughs> yeah 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 well, and i think it's like somebody, mentor mentor is the word i was looking for there we go well and i think people like being told like like make like them being taught how to draw a sphere or a person or do something a little bit better is like allowing them to do it which validates their feeling of being an artist you know it like it makes them more likely to do it because they have more successes under their belt mm. to just like to like just essentially just trust themselves in the process you know yeah if that's what you need to do that's so fine yeah 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 i i, I think i have plenty of our teachers and stuff but it, it you know i, I don't want to say it stems from insecurity but it kind of, it kind of does in a sense i don't know <laughs> I, I i really have reached a point where i'm like even if someone is insecure or whatever i don't even think that's a bad or wrong thing i, I mean i'm super insecure and like I'm, yeah. like i get like botox on my face sometimes yeah. i literally tell myself yeah. could i like pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. to go to therapy and maybe fix this problem with myself mentally yeah it's like sure but could I also just pay 60 bucks and get Botox and yeah. I'll like feel better for like the next three months and that's yeah. so much easier. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'd rather do that. A hundred percent. Like, I just, I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You start doing the things you want to do. Yeah. Um, yeah cool well uh thanks so much for being <laughs> yes cool. uh how should people follow you by the way oh um if you want to follow it's literally at jisoo artist on everything so that's literally j-i-s-u artist yeah. um i'll put it in the yeah, <laughs> yeah. cool uh yeah well uh, thank you i'll, I'll cut it there